Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Citicom video, we're going to be discussing a recent interview by DICE's Joan Anderson. He's been discussing Battlefield 4 as well as the next generation consoles, specifically rendering and the performance of rendering on the consoles, as well as things such as compute. So we're going to blast through this, and I'll give, of course, my opinions as we continue forth through the interview. So let us begin. So one of the key points of the Frostbite 3 engine and Battlefield as a whole is the fact that the Battlefield, oh sorry, the Frostbite engine is very good at dealing with multi-thread environments due to multi-core CPUs. Now, as I'm sure most of you are aware by now, the PS4 and the Xbox One are going to be utilizing, the, well, are utilizing the AMD Jaguar. That means you've got six CPU cores, which are basically open and available to games developers. The issue is that the cores themselves are actually lighter, as in the performance core for core is actually lower than what you would get in a traditional PC-based CPU. So in other words, one CPU versus a CPU from a PC, so one Jaguar CPU core versus one PC core equals the Jaguar is going to lose out, hence why developers are pushing highly for multi-threaded optimization and this actually turns out to be really good news for PC gamers as well because what basically this is going to mean is that PC gaming um, with those of us who have multi or, or you know lots of threads available on our CPUs for example i7s or certain AMD CPUs it means that we're going to get better performing games on them so anyway uh, Joanne was talking about this and he said that we've spoken, we've spent a lot of uh, time, we've been working on next gen consoles for around two years. And this last year we've been focusing on bringing up everything and optimizing it. Also, it's been a bit of a challenge, the performance on the next gen CPUs. Um, but as our game engine is quite parallel, we've paralyzed it even further. That was a sort of must. Uh, for us with 64 players at 60 FPS on PS4 and Xbox One. There was a lot of work to paralyze everything. So now we've got around 90 to 95% of the CPU utilization. And I have some screenshots I can show you and it looks quite cool when you have that type of utilization in a multiplayer type of environments. He also added that the difference before, well, the PS3 was the bottleneck back in the day. Even though the cell architecture was really powerful, just the work it took to move things off the SPU, and we want, and we went through, we spent a lot of things moving to the SPU, and saw a great performance was there, but it also hard to compensate a lot for GPU performance by moving things to the SPU. By the way, guys, I will explain what this means in just a moment. Um, out of quote, of course. This took us a lot of time. We ended up with quite a good performance, but that sort of architecture is not very balanced back then. Now, with the new co generation of consoles, the architecture is a lot more balanced and we got a, a great performance from the get-go from these CPUs, then we're able to spend a lot more time really fully utilizing them, as in paralyzing, and also doing other types of optimizations of the CPU. We don't have to optimize all away every single hit store or cache mess because of these are out of order processes so they can handle more code in a more general manner, which is good. Although, they run at quite a low clock frequency, so it's been still been a bit of a challenge to make sure we utilize all of them and how essential, and that we essentially do it now. Going forward, I think we'll start to move more code over compute on the GPUs. I think it's doing cloth simulation or parts of your rendering. You could do a little bit less brute force way on the CPU instead have the GPU handle it in a much more efficient manner. So there'll be a little bit of a challenge for us going forward, but that's sort of the trajectory we're on more and more. Now I'm going to just explain a couple of points because maybe you got a little bit too technical for uh, a couple of people. We'll just go into that really briefly, uh, out of quote of course. So first things first, we'll talk about the um, SPUs on the cell. So the cell was basically made of Y one high-end CPU, which was a dual-core processor effectively, um, which is PowerPC architecture, as well as several or seven um, small processors which were pretty much utilized for a variety of different tasks. They could be used for a lot of compute work, they could also do general purpose processing, much more besides. 
The problem was it was kind of a pain for developers to really start to make use of the SPEs and SPUs efficiently and effectively. It took a long time for the developers to really fully utilize and understand how to utilize them. Now, when we're talking about parallelization, all it simply means is, okay, well, you know, you have X amount of tasks rather than using them on say free CPU cores, we're going to more efficiently spread the load over more cores. <coughs> Excuse me. And not only we're we going to spread the load over more cores, we're going to make sure that all of the CPU cores are used efficiently and effectively. For example, just because you have six CPU cores available, if you're using say 100% of cores 0, 1, and 2, because they count it from 0 to 5. So uh, there'll be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's 6. It won't be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It starts from core 0, just for your FYI. They won't have it like, what's not ideal is be like, okay, well, core 0 and 1 have like 100% usage, just for example. And the other, you know, remaining cores, the other four, have varying usage. So, for example, one might be like 40%, one might be 22%, and so on. That's not really highly paralyzed and you're not getting the best performance possible in terms of out of order processes uh, and cache misses and stuff like that all they're basically talking about is with the AMD Jaguar these are out of order processes so they could better deal with pretty much code and unexpected programs or um, unexpected results and a cache miss is pretty simple. It basically means you don't have to optimize so much for the CPU to always check the cache. Because if it doesn't, it's not going to hang so long while it's checking the system memory. Now, if you're more curious about this and you want a lot more information, you can check out my cell processor video where I've gone into a lot of detail. Um, I don't want to kind of bog this video down with stuff I've gone over once before because otherwise, for those of you who've seen it, it's going to be boring. And for those of you who haven't and are really curious about it, I won't be doing it justice because it's a pretty big topic. Moving code over the compute, however, is pretty obvious. They're just basically going to be using the GPU to be doing things such as physics and so on. So the interviewer then asks, simultaneously, um, we're dealing with graphics engines that are not as, cap that are not as capable as really high-end PC hardware. How close can you get to the PC experience at 1080p quality-wise on a console? And if you have to compromise, what's the first thing to go? They said that... 64 players and, FP and 60 FPS was the most important thing because we wanted to bring the PC gaming experience to the consoles. And if you play Battlefield, I think you'll agree that the actual game experience of playing 64 player server and everyone interacting and having a great frame rate is actually a significant difference to what we had on the current generation of consoles. In other words, Xbox 360 with only 24 players. This sort of enables more type of gameplay. And that was the most important thing for us. That sort of set the bar that we need to get there and did get there sure we have to do a lot of uh, to do a little bit of compromise for the solution we're not running full native 1080p we're running a little bit lower resolution than that but i think it was well worth those trade-offs in, in order to make sure that you actually have some have the full sort of pc game experience overall being there and you're playing a game a little bit different anyway you're playing with a controller on a tv you're not playing with a pc with a monitor and it's very low latency in the way that it's even more twitchy for example on a, on a, a pc or a monitor is even more sharp they also added that i think it worked out quite well for us it's a sort of decision for each game going forward and what makes more sense they also added to this that we're essentially rendering a separate render target and then upsampling that to the native 1080p. And we're rendering the UI on top of that in 1080p, which actually really helps quite a lot as there's a lot of text and small details in the UI on a battlefield. They also added in terms of the difficulty of the architecture. In other words, how difficult is it to take advantage of the performance, the hardware, the specifications, the CPU, and so on in the system? And Joanne replies, it was definitely a lot easier this generation and a lot quicker. I think you're going to see that on a game that we and other people launch, that they are actually are for launch titles usually so early in this generation, the first titles usually have are typically not that great. Or perhaps the actual games are not that great, but they look okay. Here we got from an extremely good start, and I think we've spent a lot of time working on things to make sure we get to that point. But 
There is still a lot of things about the next generation consoles we can specifically optimize and utilize. Things like I mentioned with the asynchronous computing and things like how we tweak the CPUs or what the exact number of shaders and settings we use for graphics rendering. There are still some, quite a lot of untapped potential actually in the consoles that, that will be utilizing for upcoming games. So overall, oh, by the way, end quote, so overall, not exactly amazing in terms of new information. I mean, there were a few tidbits, and it's quite nice to see that DICE, of course, have heavily optimized CPU usage. That doesn't necessarily mean that this is the best that we're ever going to see. I want to point that out, because there's always more optimizations. There's always, you know, they could be utilizing a technique which, in effect, isn't the most efficient means of doing something therefore they're using a lot more utilization than what they might need to so for example they could maybe use tw save 20 percent on just one cpu simply by changing a couple of algorithms just for example they're going to understand a lot more about this same as memory bandwidth they're going to learn to be a lot more efficient they're going to learn how to better utilize and emphasize compute and what works with compute you know what can you get away with what's the type of things you can get away running on compute without interrupting or interfering with, say, memory bandwidth or, um, say, graphics commands or whatever. What about, say, cache? How best to optimize, say, the graphics cache? What about even the APIs? Like, actually learning the APIs and learning better how to program and understand them. And, of course, this isn't just... DICE or the developer doing this. Sony also need to learn this as well. Or Microsoft, whomever. It's going to be a case of, yep, okay, we understand this, we understand the basic premise, but that's not really it. It's like maths, yeah? It's like, you know, 1 plus 1 equals easy to understand, right? And, and then, of course, you know, you do the two times table, whatever, and now you've got multiplication and division. So you've got the basics down, right? So that's easy to understand, but that doesn't mean that's all there is to it. In other words, this is going to be a subject that's going to evolve over time. They're definitely going to learn more. They've done a pretty damn good, good job, I, I honestly think, anyway, considering that they are working on a multi not just a multi-platform environment, so say PC, Xbox, uh, and so on, but, well, yeah. They've also got to learn about cross-generation. So, of course, that's also taking some of their time as well. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. By the way, this interview comes to us from Tom's Hardware, so you can check that out. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.